Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine and welcome to card 7 of my Handmade Christmas series for 2016. Today's card is going to be a watercolor and we're going to start off with the Unity Stamp Company Cool Little Christmas Owl. And he's a little flyer guy, kind of reminded me of my grandfather in the army back in World War II. I'm going to stamp him on some Canson 140 pound watercolor paper using some archival black ink. Um, this, it's important to pay attention to what kind of ink you're using with watercolors because you want to use something waterproof and permanent like archival. Um, if you use something like Memento, it is not waterproof, so you're likely to get some ink running and smearing and not pretty stuff. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding what you want to use in doing something like this. This has a little bit of a texture to the paper, so I have to stamp it um, two or three times to get a good image and then I'm gonna go in with a Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen which is um, both Copic safe and waterproof um, to kind of fill in some of the gaps and these come in a pack of four I don't know if you can buy them individually or not um, but I got mine in a pack of four and they have different nib sizes so the one I'm using is an extra small and that means it's super tiny and stiff so that you can get into tiny little areas and fill it in. And I am referencing back to the artist sketch that comes with the packaging to make sure I have the lines in the correct position. And I'm not making things thicker than they need to be or anything like that. And using your Misty for something like this makes it super simple to stamp on watercolor paper um, because you can re-stamp as many times as you need to to get the image and it's not going to shift or anything. So I have taped that down to a small cutting mat using some frog delicate tape and it's yellow um, and it's thin, super easy to use, super easy to tear and it doesn't lift or tear your paper when you take it back off your project. So I showed you a glimpse of my watercolor palette and I'm using Daniel Smith watercolors. These are professional grade watercolors um, and it's what I prefer to use, but use whatever you have. Don't let not having something that I use or, or anyone else uses stop you from um, practicing your art or trying it out. Just go for it. Um, I'm gonna put some music on while I paint because you don't wanna hear me talk. So um, I will catch back up with you when we are finished. to jump in here real quick and explain what I'm doing to paint the owl. I wanted to give him a textured feather look, obviously because he's a bird. Um, so I lay down some rather wet pigment. You can kind of see it moving around a little bit. Um, and then while it's fairly wet, I go in with a darker brown 
and kind of dot it in to let it fade out so that you still see a variation in color, but it's not distinct. It's not like looking like dots. It's more like a feather texture. And when you have a looser pigment like this, you can kind of um, leave the dots where they are. And it'll disperse and give you a texture and a variation in color without looking deliberate, if you will. So you can see how those kind of fade out a little bit. And you wanna make sure that you have enough moisture on the paper for the pigment to disperse into.
So I went in with a fine line bottle with some masking fluid in and I masked off all of the little um, snowflakes that you see, the little dots, and I added a few extra ones in that weren't in the original drawing. And you can get packs of these bottles, they come in empty bottles, um, from Ellen Hudson or Simon Says Stamp, and you can even get them on Amazon. And you can fill them with anything you want, uh, masking fluid, glossy accents, glue, whatever you need in the super fine tip applicator. So this is all dried. Um, it probably took maybe a couple hours to dry. And I don't recommend putting the masking fluid over areas you've already painted. Um, I tried it because it was kind of an experiment to see what it would do. And I wanted to add a background to this without having to worry about messing up what already painted. And I wish I had just been more careful with, with my brush. So um, I'll show you the rest of that in a minute. I went ahead and added my background. Um, and I wetted around the owl and then I picked up some of the paint, moved it around a little bit and blurred out the edges. I wanted the background to look really washy and light and um, breezy to a certain extent because it's outside and it is snowing. So you want to kind of get that movement in there. So as you can see, taking off the masking fluid over the dried paint removed a lot of the dried paint. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. I made it work by repainting it, obviously, but um, it did give the leather of the hat a little more of a textured old leather look to it. So I did kind of like it, um, but I wouldn't recommend doing it because it's not, you know, you, you end up wasting some time because you're repainting things you've already painted. Um, so I left this in here because I wanted you to see that it is fixable, um, but it's not a great technique to use. Just kind of trying to pass along some of that learn as you go type stuff. And I ended up having to repaint my owl almost completely. Um, it's really hard to match browns once you've mixed them. Um, but again, you make it work. I made it work. I loved how it turned out in the end. So that's the important part. Um, but just trying to pass along some of those don't do this at home kind of things.
So I went ahead and cut him out using a stitcher, stitched rectangle die. And before I adhered the rest of my card, I put I wanted to stamp the sentiment along his bot the bottom of the panel underneath his feet. And um, this stamp came from the same stamp set as the owl. So I've just got a little piece of plastic there that I can lay over my piece, I can stamp on it, and get the right positioning for the stamp. I did stamp that in Memento, because we're done with water, so it doesn't, doesn't need to be waterproof at this point. So I've got a piece of natural cardstock or craft cardstock <clears throat> um, that I use the same die on. <coughs> and that green striped piece came from Die Cuts with a View Evergreen stack. And this was a 12 by 12 that I got oh, probably two or, two or three years ago. So um, it's just a really pretty peppermint stripe with green foil on a white background. So I layered um, the craft car stock behind the watercolor piece on top of the green, and that's on a card base. So that completes the card for today, guys. Thanks for sticking with me through the long video. And um, let me know if you have any questions. I hope you learned something, enjoyed yourself. Merry Christmas, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.